Hey guys, this week on the Awesome Cast, we talk about the return of virtual reality, maybe gaming on the small side, and stomach pumps? All that and more as DJ Lunchbox of the Mayhem Show joins us. Awesome Cast. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Chachi Plays for Kids. Find out how you can participate and donate. ChachiPlays.com. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast 133. It's Sorgatron, Mike Sorg, right here behind the booth this week uh, in the studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, let's get geeky. Let's get it on. We're geeky on. Get, let's get our geeky on, right? Right, right, Chachi? Nice save. Nice I save. Almost went a bad way. But, uh, yeah, it did. <laughs> it was, I did. Yeah. And I just remembered that somebody moved something behind your couch. There's really? some nice old 70s uh, uh, designs there behind you. Oh, <laughs> look at that. It's the cot. Yeah, somebody put the cot behind the I couch. I missed over the there, cot. So, <laughs> and so we, we, not only do we have the couch, if anybody needs to, to crash in the studio, we have a cot we can roll out. It's yeah. got a whole mattress to it. It does. And it's got a wonderful design, as you can see. It's behind not the very center. comfy, though. No, it's not. Very it's comfy. not very I mean, comfy at all. Than, it's better than an actual cot you know well yeah but still not yeah. very comfy no. how you doing chach i am doing it seminally well yeah you got chachi plays going on yes it's my uh my stress-filled period of the year mm-hmm. first yeah. episode of uh unsung for the new year yes um we are at uh six we just got a donation so we're at about six uh 40 for chachi plays it's at chachiplays.com if yes. you're that. what's going on chachi plays what do you do uh it's this year we're raising money for at-risk and homeless uh children art programs art programs for at-risk and homeless children is a better way to say it um so go help us out there please go. and we got a we got a goal this year of five thousand dollars there you go if we reach it during these shows in the next three hours i will strip down and sit naked on the couch for the rest oh, of the night oh, please don't do that shut your mouth okay it's for the kids <laughs> or i'll keep my clothes on whatever you guys pick okay but uh chachiplays.com we could really use your uh Really use your help. And joining us tonight is Will Rutherford, DJ Lunchbox, master of the mo- mole people of ThoughtfulRide.com and one of the co-founders of the Wrestling Mayhem Show.com. How you doing this Every- week, sir? I'm good. Everything you say is true. That is yes. all, all completely accurate. All of it. All of Especially it. the mole people. Especially the mole people. <sighs> they smell terrible. But they're <laughs> really hard workers, and they've got spirit. So I keep them around. Um so how's it Great going? To... You're, you're still holding down your connection to the old media world over there at the Pokes? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I am. I forget if we can, we can say on that show or not. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Well, the Post Gazette, you're working down there. Yes, I do. I work for the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. I'm in the marketing department. Um, and it's not all old media in my world. I also uh, I have a big hand in our uh, online our all online store where we sell all kinds of like sports memorabilia, Pittsburgh things, stuff like that. That's the majority of my job, but I, uh, I am also involved in a lot of the day-to-day things that, uh, make, I wouldn't say make the newspaper happen, but make things happen in the newspaper. Maybe you guys should cover the story I submitted to you last week. Listen, man, if I had any influence over the, uh, over the editorial (laughs) department, they'd probably pay me more. Listen, just write it down on a piece of paper and slip it under their door. There you go. That's how. That. That's old school. It's old. School. I can do that. I slip it. Slip it under many doors. I submitted it, but apparently they don't pay attention to user submitted stories. Um, you have to get it to the right place. Yeah, and that, hey. that's a process. The uh, so. the form on your website is not the right place. I have nothing to do with that website either. <laughs> 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 if you if you there's if you do. This is inside baseball, but if you go to peachystore.com and uh, fill out the contact us form, that does come to me. That's, that's um, this here, right? Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah that that store. will come to me, um, hmm. but I can't do anything with it <laughs> <really>. <laughs> unless you're asking about an order that you've placed. So, I ordered that my story be run in the Pit Post Gazette. <laughs> I don't know how much that costs. I'll have to. I'll have to forward you to my manager. <laughs> Contact us. 
<laughs> of course, this is the awesome cast. Whoever runs this is a mean, mean person who <laughs> poops too much. Who <laughs> poops too much. Um, I'm guessing on the poop. Like thing. I said, this is where we get geek now. You can uh, you can join us here every uh, Tuesday at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, everybody joins us. Uh, Twitter us at awesome cast. Uh, and of course, this is a big block. Actually, we were recording on just this show. We do the wrestling mayhem show and uh, other shows from here 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 and there you know um and uh and you can join us like i said in the chat just like bobby fj town riz uh me and chachi are in there to keep an eye on things tony og and uh juggalo john i'm gonna yell at everyone in the chat room as he normally does as he normally does well like i said you can connect to us also on twitter at awesomecast you can also drop us a line uh to uh, i'm sorry contact at awesomecast.com awesomecast.com will get to to get you to all the past episodes over on sorgatronmedia.com and all the links and everything for Facebook and Google Plus, uh, so you can uh, uh, chat with us on there. We're also available on iTunes, the Real Roku box on the Blip TV site and apps on Roku, and I think soon we'll be on the one on the Xbox app. Uh, anywhere you can access YouTube and on the Stitcher app, which is a really cool app they have out for <laughs> Android uh, and, and the iOS devices. What's going on, Chach? Oh, I just typed a completely nonsensical sentence into the chat room. Oh. Perfect. That's what. That's that's why we have it. There. You are the ones that are high. Oh no. <laughs> no, but high is spelled H I, as in the greeting <laughs> hello. Like hi fi. Yeah. Hi oh, everybody. Okay. Hi. Hi. So it, speaking of podcast apps, can I plug a new one? No. Oh, there's a new one. Okay. All right. They didn't fine. pay for space. They didn't pay for space. Nobody pays for biscuits. space. I work here. I don't have to pay for my advertising space. <laughs> what you got there, Spritcher? Um, I started using a new podcast app today called Downcast, and it's great. I've heard good things about it. It's uh, it is a dollar ninety nine, but uh, it's it's got some good functionality, some great features. <laughs> you can make playlists, which is the main reason I picked the it up. The chat so. room is insane today. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I had, yeah, it is. I see that. <laughs> so that's you, all. No, that's at, all. I got it right here. So I mean, what, what's so great? Is it uh, actually just downloading everything off iTunes or? Well, um, I, my experience using the podcast, I was using Apple's actual podcasting app before oh, this. I'm sorry. And uh, yeah, it was bad. It was, it was, uh, it would lose my place. My main concern is it would lose my place a lot. And sometimes it would stop about when there was like 15 or 20 minutes left in the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, downcast on the other hand, uh, so far it's been fantastic. I've spent most of the day listening to, uh, the thrilling adventure hour and, uh, it hasn't let me down yet. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of Stitcher myself. Like I, I actually do pretty much live by Stitcher at this point. And it's basically when things uh, I can't find it in Stitcher or something messes up. Like uh, uh, Nerd, ca- uh, I'm sorry, the Nerdist actually posted both parts of their Gabe Newell Steam interview, and it would only mm-hmm. show the second part of it. So I had to go mm-hmm. into the podcast app to go grab the first part of it. So I mean, just little things like that where stuff like screws up like that. Um, but other than that, like Stitcher has been really nice. It it, it pulls. It, it doesn't pull off iTunes. You have to submit to Stitcher in order for it to work but so many people are because it's become really kind of its own platform and they've actually updated they didn't used to be able to do this uh but it actually does sync my spot from the phone where i'm usually listening to which it's usually i, I run it i walk into yeah I walk in the car uh I, I sit down in the car and i've hooked this up to my radio and i'm listening to whatever is next on my queue you know, it's really nice for that. Um, but then, like, if I'm sitting at work, uh, at, my, at my one workout on Fridays, uh, you know, uh, at a computer, it syncs to that now. It syncs to my iPad. Uh, uh, so it, it's kind of mm-hmm. nice that it's all kind of synced up in the cloud. It didn't used to. There's this last update they did in the last couple months. Uh, so they're really improving on that. Um, so it's definitely kind of my recommended way to, to, to listen audio-wise at this point. So, Chachi, what do you listen to podcasts on? I don't. You don't listen to podcasts. I don't listen Oops. to podcasts, um, uh, mainly because a I won't pay for an app to manage my podcast. Okay. Um, B, they always lose my place. I have not had an app that does not lose my place. Now, now, now the Stitcher does every once in a while, but it's not enough that it's a problem. And usually, it's something like if I if I like get out of a, get out of a, a Stitcher like a weird way. Like, I didn't really stop, and I just, like, locked the screen and walked away and forgot about it. Sometimes I'll lose my place. But for most part, it's pretty good. Um, and and now, now, Will, you, this is just your first day with Downcast, right? Yeah, just my first day. So yeah. I, I have gotten into the, the nuts and bolts. And to be honest, the 
even making the playlist is a little weird how they do it. You can't just like, I want to add this episode to the playlist. It's, it's, it's a little more complicated than that. Yeah. See, I had one for a little bit that was, was like, I had to go find the RSS feeds because like it was one of those, like I had Stitcher, but I wanted something like Mikey and Mikey and Bob's podcast where they put their radio show stuff. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't get that in there into anything. And of course it was before the podcast app and I just use that now. Um, I have, uh, what's it called? I actually have an app that will do all of that for me. Good. Uh, by default on Android, it's Listen or something. Listener. And it, well, actually, hey, would, would, uh, 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 would you want to update people on your new phone? Not really. What you got there? Well, you're, you're, you're kind of first few days with it, huh? Yeah. So, but still, it's what is it? It's an LG Optimus L9. I call it the app Optimus Prime. Mm-hmm. And it's lighter than any phone you can ever get anywhere. It is kind of ridiculous. I, I mean, the only the only thing that's left for them that they could do to make this lighter is to give me the uh, the see through uh, phone screen thing that Tony Stark uses in Iron Man to take over the Department of Justice's computer during his hearing. Mm-hmm. That's basically it, there, right? Yeah, for everybody for a good shot yeah. of it. So it's super thin. It's it's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Um. And I think this is the one that is the Nexus is based on. Yeah. Maybe like the latest one. Yes. So excellent, excellent. Big update from you from your uh, G two. Oh yeah. So I am current. Well, no, I am not current. I have ice cream sandwich still, <laughs> but jelly bean will be pushed. So they say. So they say. So let's kick it off with the. Oh man, I keep hitting the wrong button. I'm sorry. Your face. Um, with the awesome thing of the week, uh, <laughs> John says, "Yeah, because a phone is so heavy." And we know you got. You kind of got to feel it to kind of get the idea. You know, you look at how big that thing is, and it's like, oh, it's going to be kind of hefty. You know, I, I kind of laugh at people as say, oh, my iPad one is so heavy because I got an iPad three and it's so light. You know, that kind of situation. But man, whatever. Um, let's get into it. Uh, the new segment we tried to start last week. Uh, the awesome thing of the week. Do, should I kick this off again? You want me to? Or <laughs> yeah, because I know what Chachi's got coming up. Um, so this is one that I heard about. Uh, this is one from CES, but apparently this is kind of a Kickstarter story as well. Um, hey, guys, remember virtual reality? Right, right. I know of it. You remember of virtual reality? Remember well, Lawnmower we, Man? We've uh, never successfully had virtual reality, so we can't remember well, virtual we had reality. It. I mean, we had it. It, it, it. it caught on. Like I remember, I remember seeing like like the big thing at the mall uh, uh, where where you could go play a, like like rise of the triad with vr or something like that i remember the old articles in like game pro seems um, really dumb what 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 you're talking about okay okay but what <laughs> what if vr like worked chach and what if it was a little bit affordable can i hook it up to my xbox i don't know yet <laughs> It's just a Kickstarter. They're probably not that far to get an Xbox freaking licensing there. Can I hook it up to my Xbox? No, but there was a... Actually, there was a thing where they had 360 degrees of screens at, like, one of the Sony or LG booths or something, and it was, like, an Xbox game. So, so I mean, some of those games do support multiple displays. I just want to hook it up to my Xbox. <laughs> it's coming. But this is the first steps, Chach. This is the, this is the future, man. It's the future. Uh, I, I heard about this. Um, you know, again, I haven't experienced it. It's kind of a cool story. It seems like it's got the right names uh, uh, behind it. It's called the Oculus Rift. Uh, and, and what really kind of got me excited about it was listening to the guys on The Verge, who are usually pretty um, tough on things, just going nuts over this thing. I guess they did a demo of it. It's VR. It, it, it's it's a light headset. Um, they'll show it. There it is there. It looks like it's not very big at all. I mean, it's, it's going to be hanging off your face a little bit, but still, compared to the units that they used to have back in the day, uh, and, and VR has mostly been given up on, right? Like, nobody's really doing it. You don't see those headsets and those head tracking sets for, for the PC. Like, I remember seeing 2000. There's always something in the back of PC Gamer uh, that said it was going to do something like this. And it basically tracked your mouse instead for movement or something like that. Uh, but if you watch this video, it's got John Carmike. It's got Cliffy B. It's got Gabe Newell from... Uh, Valve. It's got uh, a couple other guys from Valve and a few other companies. Uh, the guys behind Guitar Hero. Um, 
it, it's really kind of got the excitement. It did a Kickstarter thing, and the the dev unit is uh, going to be released, I think, in March. Uh, you're pre-ordering now, or maybe it's shipping now. Uh, and it's going for only $300 for the dev unit. That's cheap. If that's for a developer unit, I mean, compared to something like Google Glass that went for like, what was it, $1,200, $1,500? Uh, so it seems like something, if this is really as, as good as, as it sounds like uh, from from the gaming press, is just going nuts over this thing. This could be a very accessible VR kind of uh, uh, setup that we could be seeing uh, uh, down the line from somebody that just, this, this kid apparently just was an enthusiast uh, for uh, stereoscopic uh, uh, viewing and and put this thing together and, and kickstarted it. Uh, what do you think, LB? You, th you think uh, uh, this could be the return of, of the, the promise of virtual reality? I, uh, I, I like it. I think it's very interesting, but I, and I'm not sure why, but I distrust it because it's so cheap. Because it's so cheap, well, isn't it? To... I, I distrust it. It needs to be more expensive. <laughs> I feel. But that's been the problem, though. That's why it's been more, you know, unaccessible, right? I want to pay more for it. Exactly. Yeah. Like if someone, if someone handed you a phone and said, "Here, this is fifty dollars," you're like, "Well, what's this cheap piece of shit?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's something. There's something about the price that implies the quality, and I mean that's it's not right. But it, it doesn't it stand the reason that, like, after all these years, maybe we're able to do some very similar things for a lot cheaper. And, and you know, and being dev, dev units are usually more expensive, right? Like, I, like a dev like PlayStation Three or Xbox is is a bit more than, than mm -hmm. our consumer models, right? So, so mm -hmm. it stands to reason. I mean, I, I could see this thing going for 150, 200 bucks for it. And, and given again, given the tech, I mean, look at what all we can do with these little things, right? No, it's not a Game Boy; it's an iPhone. I'm sorry. Um, but, what kind of skin is that? Is that a Game Boy? Um, it's just like a oh, one. It's from, just a game. Okay. It's just from like five below. Uh, somebody, somebody took my cassette tape one. I didn't. Um, I didn't see it well, and I thought it was a Game Boy uh, color, like a little tiny Game Boy color skin. No, just, just a. Uh, yep. Um, but uh, uh, but no, it doesn't stand a reason. Like with all we can do with something like this, that they've gotten the tech down enough that it could be a good, affordable, you know, piece. Um, I don't know what it is, compatibility. They're trying to get in the hands of developers to see what it's going to get into. Will it run on your Xbox? I don't expect it to run on something like an Xbox anytime soon. Maybe down the line. But I think you're Then gonna... I don't want it. <laughs> then you don't want it. There are plenty of PC gamers out there, Shotch. No, there's not. Yes, there are. Yeah, Look yeah, at Steam. There is, actually. There is a whole hey, bunch. Wait, hey, what? hey, I got, a, I got a little tip for you guys. What? PC gaming is dead. Uh, the numbers don't really pass it on. <laughs> this might be a good segue into my cool thing of the week. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I don't really think that PC gaming is dead. All right, I'm well, just messing with Sorg. Uh, Go ahead. I I'm building a gaming PC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Speak. See. Oh, we. You know, uh, we kind of covered that last week. Go on. Go on though. What the thing I put in the yeah the, yeah the, yeah I'll explain why we covered it last we, week we as soon as you're it. done. Did we cover this? I talked about it for 45 seconds. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, well, well, I uh, the the site that I discovered. I'm I'm building a gaming PC, which I've never done. I've never built a PC in general. Um, I mean, I've fiddled with them. I know how to swap things around, but I've never like bought a case and installed the motherboard, the whole nine. And I'm learning a lot, and it's it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm pulling resources from all over the internet. Life Hacker has been a huge help. Oh yeah. But um, another huge help is uh, PCPartPicker.com, and the reason that it's a huge help for me is because. I uh, um, it, it tells me if there's compatibility issues. Basically, the way it works is you pick each part that you're uh, putting into your machine, and it will tell you if there's if there's compatibility issues, if there's and and what the issues are. It'll also help you get the best price by uh, looking at vendors. There are a lot of different sites all over the internet. So. Um, I, I this would be a thousand times harder without this website. Oh, uh, sure, especially these days. Because back when <laughs> back when I was building stuff, it was uh, a matter of okay, it's a Pentium three uh, seven hundred megahertz, and that's a socket, you know, socket whatever it is, and it goes in this motherboard that accepts that socket, and uh, and the memory is DDR. 
Wii O2 or whatever it is, or PC uh, 2100, and and uh, all the video cards were numerical, right? Uh, now, oh my God, good luck. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's just, like, I mean, even just like case manufacturers. Yeah, I spent I spent a good hour just trying to find a case that worked and didn't look like shit. You know? Yeah, yeah. And before it'd be like, oh, is it ATX? Uh, everybody's pretty much ATX, right? Or or AT or or whatever. And now there's so many like like uh, shuttles and and modular PCs. Uh, you know, like what we saw with the uh, supposed Steam Box that came out of CES. Uh, mm-hmm. there, there's so many different ways to do it. You know, I, and that. This is why I threw my hands up and gave up and went Mac because I have this nice little Mac Mini that I just truck around here and I just did all this work the last few days on it and, I, and the worst thing I had to do was pop the bottom off and put memory in, and mm-hmm. uh, I mean that that's just tremendous to me. Um, but it, but hey, you know it, 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 it's a learning experience. At least now, like you know, and the best thing is when you get to a point whether you go with this or you buy another PC down in the, in the future you're going to be able to diagnose that thing a lot better because of your experience with this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's exciting. I'm, I'm really excited. I'm probably going to end up uh, saving a lot of money as opposed to buying a pre-built <laughs> machine. And um, uh, it's I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Well, uh, the reason I brought it up last week is because near the end of the show, I started playing with the website. Mm-hmm. And I got through the processor, the memory, the case – the cooler, and then I got to the hard drive. Just by picking a hard drive, I was up to ten thousand six hundred sixty-six dollars in. Uh, well, you were <laughs> dropping price. like you were dropping like huge solid states into it, aren't, weren't you? I, I picked the most expensive hard drive, <laughs> and it was a uh, it was a one point five terabyte uh, solid oh state drive <laughs> that cost uh, it cost ten thousand dollars, and I didn't even realize it when I picked it because at that point at that point I was just clicking the thing that was at the top of the list. <laughs> and I, I got there, and I'm like, "All right, I'm done." You can do the same thing, uh, dropping uh, uh, solid states in the in the uh, in the uh, customizer up on Apple Store too. Mm-hmm. Like, drop a few of those in like a Mac Pro or something. Oh my God, <laughs> you'll get to it. <laughs> it was easy enough to get to it, like an eight thousand dollar Mac Pro, but you start throwing those in there, you're you're looking at maybe twenty grand uh, mm-hmm. if they even offer something that big. But yeah. I'll be I'll be happy with my eight or nine hundred dollar little. Uh, yeah, and you're just, I, mean, you, I just wanted to play the things $10, that I wanted to play. Ten thousand dollars. <laughs> Spend ten thousand dollars. Do it. I don't. I don't think I have ten thousand dollars. Not working at the post gazette. You don't. on a PC. <laughs> Can I have five? Josh, Can I have five? The, what? Can I have five? Five dollars. Five thousand. I don't even have that. Yes, you do. Give me your Josh, wallet, bitch. Nope. We may have covered this at the beginning of the show. Uh, I work for the newspaper. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Can we move on to my ridiculous story of the week? Yeah, Yeah, with Chachi. Chachi, tell us. That's my neat thing. Yeah, we're we're all kind of paused at this one. Okay. Uh, This one is uh, from CNET.com. What what am I looking at here, Chach? So last week I I convinced Sorg that if I couldn't find no, something, no, you didn't convince me. By well, the way, well I I told you, you attempted to convince me. <laughs> no, I told you that in the event that I couldn't find something that I found so incredibly awesome that I had to talk about it here. And obviously he's putting the bar far too high. Um. No, there was nothing out that blew my mind. I'm sorry. Not to blow your mind. It has to be like, oh, that's cool. I didn't get any of those responses. You know what I saw today? What did you see today? I saw a story on the iPad Mini and a story on the Samsung Chromebook. Okay. By the way, I got my hands on a Chromebook last week. They're kind of cool. Yeah, but it's not. But it's, it's not a awesome, whole story. Yeah, it's not awesome news of the awesome. No, 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 no. But um, the most ridiculous thing I saw today while I was looking through tech news is, uh, and ironically, the guy who invented the Segway. <laughs> Is the guy who We're talking about this. the little two-wheeled vehicle yes. that they do um, the tours through Pittsburgh downtown. Yeah, this guy invented a uh, a two-wheel lazy mobile, <laughs> and now he's making it easier because he has a home stomach pump. Home stomach pump. It's called the Aspire Assist. I'm waiting for the infomercial for this one. And during, uh, and it says here, during a 20-minute procedure, uh, users are 
implant uh, users have a uh, implanted stomach valve and a tube that goes to the machine and after 20 or 20 minutes after eating a meal users go to the bathroom and attach the machine to the port and a third of the meal is drained out through the gadget and into the toilet so essentially we're giving uh the obesity problem a real kick in the ass we're getting it out of here <laughs> any way possible that's and, not right okay not only are they are they doing this but they're they're saying that they that that during the trial uh patients lost 45 pounds in the first year jeez and lost 100 percent of their excess weight well, no crap! You're sucking it out through a tube in your stomach. Well, I mean, you're sucking out basically. This, this, you don't have to eat differently, which is the which is the hardest part for people. Apparently, you don't. You put the fork down. <laughs> All right. No, this is not acceptable. This is not a solution. All right. This is just dumb. Because you know what? This is just going to turn pe more people in anorexics. But it's going to only people, they won't have people to throw with up. money and people with money too. Because you're going to have to Bully put mix. you know money to put the procedure in, and then like you're still spending the money on that much food. So I mean, what's the point at that point? But the worst part is they're already trying to make it a verb. Wait, what? what? What's the verb in this? Uh, hold on, let me, I, I lost it. Uh, well, the machine is called, yes. uh, the machine is called At Aspire Assist. Yes. So they're trying to make it, uh, aspirate. Oh, and aspirate? I guess. Aspirate? That means choke. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what? <sighs> I, don't, like, I, I hate this country. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, and it says it, it may be affordable for patients who cannot afford a uh, bariatric th surgery that's the bypass right yes okay um wow well it's good that's an option for that but still it seems like it's still a step you have to take so if you get lazy in the uh, okay. if you get too lazy to use your portable stomach pump <laughs> you deserve to be drug out and shot you, well, you deserve to go ahead and get fat oh. in that case. So, all right. Um, moving on. I, I had a few stories here. You want to stick? No, with screw you. Why we screw me? I'm still angry. Okay, that's fine. You got anything constructive to say about that? Absolutely not. Okay, moving on then. How about video games? Here's one that uh, we had in from Juggalo John. Uh, uh, mentioned this. This somehow I got on the mailing list for this. Uh, and and then that and I just completely ignored it because of that. But apparently this is something along the lines of what we've been seeing with Ouya, uh, another Android-based uh, uh, video game system. This is going to be like the most, the smallest, most portable one. It's called the Game Stick. Um, apparently yeah, I saw that. you saw that. Uh, apparently the console. It, it, well, oh, I didn't realize this. This is actually an HDMI port uh, on this little stick that comes out of this controller. It looks like a little like Wii controller. And here's the video here. Mel gave us a little bit. But apparently you, you you have this thing in your pocket. You pull off the stick. Uh, you stick it into your TV. And I guess it's it's going to be those. And this is I think is the first big thing because if it's, it's one of those things. Well, I guess if it's just on the stick, you t plug it into HDMI. You can plug it into anything. So. so Again, gotcha. I don't know Game what stick. kind of support. It doesn't really, unless I'm missing something, it doesn't really have me as excited as something like the Ouya. Because the Ouya felt like it had, well, I guess they had the same thing. They had their own kind of ecosystem here. They have Android games already in on it. I mean, it just seems like another option. Um, I don't know. Do you guys Do you guys think, I feel like this is something that, like, remember those TV games guys that, that started putting all those video games on joysticks, like like the Atari emulators and everything? Like, I feel like those are the people that would make this work, that can that can market this thing, put it in a Walmart, and, and kids pick it up, and they have a bunch of games on it. Um, I don't know. What do you think, LB? You, you said you've seen a little bit of this? I saw a little bit of it. I heard they, uh, they got into some legal trouble at some point. They did. Uh, it was brief, and it had absolutely nothing to do with their product. No, it was something about the uh, huh. something in the video, right? Yeah, they had uh, apparently in their demo video for for Kickstarter, they put in some video of a game 
that they didn't have uh, clearance to show. Mm. Yeah. Um, it, the game wasn't isn't finished yet. It's not even supposed to be uh, shown to public. So nothing to do. It was just a technicality kind yeah. of thing. So uh, okay. I mean, I mean it's fun. it's Android based though, right? Yeah. 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 Is that right? Eh, I'm not excited. You know, it, it just it doesn't, seems like, it doesn't thrill me. It seems like another thing, and that was the thing. Like there was a lot of things we saw at CES last week. We saw stuff like the Steam Box. We saw that Nvidia Shield. Uh, we see something like this. Ouya was really big. Uh, uh, kind of had a coming out party and got got onto a bunch of uh, uh, there was an, uh, some Internet of Things alliance. I know they they uh, started on with uh, with Ouya and a few other manufacturers. Um, so so. I, I don't know. It feels like there's all these great ideas with gaming, but and again, CS is kind of the place for these things to come out and either flourish or not, or inspire the next generation. Uh, but I, I, I can't get. A, I mean, I can get a little bit excited about something new, yeah. I don't expect the to be huge, but it's got that ecosystem of Android, and if it's if it's got that already there ecosystem, and something like this is doing the same thing. Um, but again, we haven't seen anything like this go to market yet. Uh, we don't really even understand what's going on with something like the NVIDIA Shield. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it just seems like, uh, well, great idea, guys, but I hope you get bought by somebody that can do something with this. Right, Chach? Yep. Uh, Chachi Plays update. We're up to 710. All right, and you will not be playing a game stick at Chachi Place. No, absolutely no, not. No, no, no. <laughs> so, so uh, is, is is the jury still out for this LB, or you're, you're pretty much uh, it's Man. a no fly on this one, probably. I, at this, I'm I'm not really I'm not really on board for it. Here's... I mean, yeah, it's uh, Android gaming. That's great. Whatever. Yeah. It's yeah. just so so. It's another. Con- it's basically another way to use a controller for the games that you have on your phone. Mm-hmm. What are you saying, Chuck? Uh, it's pointless, um, and I'm not. I'm not. I have, I have facts or I have reasons to back it up. So don't cut me off yet. I, I the reason I find it pointless is because the only time I think someone should bother to release a controller for something is mm-hmm. if they do it correctly. It's not a controller. It's a whole console. Though they're trying to put it out as a whole platform. Then I care even less. Okay, that it's all yet <laughs> another platform. It, 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 you know what? the The same response works. Okay. Okay. Uh, number one, they're trying to break into a market that is pretty much locked up. Is I, there's exaggerated? only there's only a couple people that have the ability to break into this market, and those two companies are already doing it. One did it by accident. Wait, wait, wait. Clarify yourself there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, that was just something And that... you're a little too early to say that they're successful. Right. I'm not saying they're successful. Yeah. But they I, got, I'm they, saying... They got people behind them. Yeah. They have, they have backing. And not to say these guys don't either, because they... Uh, I mean, they're at... Uh, uh, 300- Are they at $5 million? No. They're at like 384000 of a $100,000 goal. Goal. I'm not uh, impressed. With 16 days to go. No, it's not as inspiring as Ouya because Ouya was one of the first ones. First of all, they're the first ones to make noise that we could do something like this. These guys are taking. Looks like they're taking what Ouya did, trying to make it smaller and easier. From yes. the looks of it. Uh, so I mean, but they're still the next one. And. But, I mean, it's, it's cool that we have these, and thanks to something like Android, we get to have iterations on iterations like this. Um, but I think what we're starting to see now, just like you had, you know, there was a really good discussion about, uh, you know, Android. You know, you you, you guys have had, uh, you know, good, really good phones and really bad phones. But everybody throwing their hat in and, and trying to improve on Android has led to something like what you have in your hands right now, Chachi. That you do have a really decent phone. And I'm actually looking over at the Android camp and saying, man, I wish I had some of the stuff that they have on my I- iPhone. Um, you know, regardless of, you know, still picking the iPhone. There's and, only you know, a few companies but, mm-hmm. that are doing really good things mm-hmm. and they've been there the whole time mm-hmm. lg has been releasing phones for a really long time and they were kind of crappy to begin with htc did the good phones to begin with exactly. and now look at them the, now you see samsung they they did phones that were admittedly ripoffs of iphones now look at them right so so this was all building but i think you're gonna i think it'd be interesting to see these guys they're all kind of uh 
you know, playing thanks to playing, Kickstarter, playing different ways. Yeah, and Kickstarter is enabling this. You have all these different ideas happening. Uh, something like an, like Android, they can keep building on and building on, and eventually, maybe the game, game stick is not going to be the thing that's really going to kick ass. Maybe Ouya itself is not the thing that's going to kick ass, but the thing after that, the thing three things down from that, could be the thing. We, we get excited about something like an Ouya or a game stick because of possibilities. Just like we get excited about everything at CES because nothing's really. I'm not going to see. A project shield on the on my walmart uh store shelf i'm not going to see the steam box really for another year from the sounds of it i'm not going to see a 4k tv even remotely affordable or usable for another year or three who knows but it's the possibility of the future in technology and this is right what's get, but this I, is what gets people excited and the money behind it i know what expects not any of these guys to be the next nintendo i'm not saying that they they're going to be the next nintendo i'm not saying that any of these companies are going to be the next nintendo sony or xbox mm -hmm. i am just saying that from this standpoint the video game market has been and most likely will be locked up mm -hmm. uh, for at least the the foreseeable future mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. Because, I mean, Nintendo just released the Wii U, which gives them a year, year and a half, two years to come up with a concept for the next system. Yeah. Okay? Because uh, they're still behind, so they have to plan what they're going to do next. And they have to already be doing it if the other guys are releasing or at least announcing uh, full details of their new consoles in this year. Yeah. Okay? So because of that, uh, that market is already locked up. Yeah, yeah. As I stated before, Ouya got in by accident because they had a great idea. Now, whether that idea actually works or not, that's another story. But as of right now, we have Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft, and then over there in the little corner, or on the outside, looking in the little basement window, is Ouya knocking, trying to pick the window uh, lock. Stop. Think... Okay. And then the other competitor is Steam. Mm -hmm. Now, Steam is allowed to peek in the little window with Ouya because Steam already conquered their own market over here. And actually, and they, have the a, next and, and actually they have a bigger market than any Xbox or PlayStation themselves. They right. have more people online. So the next logical step for Steam is to try to break into people's living rooms. They have the leverage. So right now, Steam is standing on Ouya's shoulders trying to pop that window open so they can crawl in and set themselves up next to the Xbox. But the problem with that is because these two companies who are not rightfully supposed to be there are letting in all of this other crap. Did you relate the game industry to a feudal system? I, I related the game industry to uh, burglars breaking into someone's house. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. I know. I, I, don't, I have no idea what to do with that. Uh, See, Ouya so okay. and Steam are kind of like malware. <laughs> like they're, they're breaking into your computer and they're just setting up this icon on your desktop. And hoping to God that you don't see them and they just fit in and siphon all your information. Huh. I, 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 I don't know what to do with that. Uh, well, do you have any thoughts on that? I'm right. Uh, I, I, sure. I, I think the, the most interesting thing that you said was the, the – basically you alluded that um, Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo uh, – were rightfully there and Ouya and Steam uh, are, aren't rightfully there. They're not. Um, what's that? They're not. Right. Which I, which I think is very interesting because uh, a few years ago we were like, Microsoft, what the fuck are they doing trying to get in there? And now here they are because they had a, a big enough audience before that. Like I said, it, it, just and because... That's, that's why Steam will work and that's why Ouya... I think ultimately it'll make some noise. Uh, it might get a couple developers, but it'll fail. Yeah, because you, it doesn't have a huge name backing it. As excited for Ouya as I am, and I really want it to succeed, because it, despite what I'm saying, I want other other companies to have an opportunity. Yeah, and that's, because mm -hmm. uh, you can't have uh, progress without a healthy dose of competition. 
exactly. And, and there'll be nice distractions. There'll be nice, like, hey, check this out. They're doing some really interesting things. And and eventually you'll see something like somebody's going to adopt the technology. Like, I kind of wish online would get bought by, like, Microsoft for, for uh, implication on the Xbox or something, right? Like, because I think it's a really interesting technology. They kind of screwed it up. But but the technology is sound. Uh, something like this, you know, uh, they get something like these. And, and this is a whole different market. This is this is a, a kind of a niche market. Um, uh, John's saying in the chat room, uh, well, when it comes down to price, uh, if the game stick comes in at $45, let's say, which I think like some of the early adopters, that's as cheap as they're getting it. Um, you know, it could be, it could make it a little bit of a fighter. I, well, then we go to uh, the, well, I think you were saying that the, 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 the this is a $50 phone, so it's probably a crappy phone situation, right? That's so, true. So, that's true. So there's that. I- but, I also want to ask, though, if, if Ouya gets in and it's affordable and people are excited about it, who's going to make games for it? Uh, developers. Uh, they, they, well, they already have Minecraft on it. The, 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 said they were doing a version. There's a few other uh, uh, popular Android developers. I haven't checked the stuff recently, but I remember there was a lot of names popping up, Fruit Ninjas, all that kind of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. It's not going to be hard for people to port stuff over if they're already making stuff for android and chachi you're better than i am you're you're on this more than i am how how is the gaming uh platform on android these days you got a lot of stuff you have to choose from yeah i, I mean i have the same stuff that you do for the most part yeah yeah you're and playing... if i don't have it the day you do i have it before mm-hmm. or i have it uh two weeks after as long as it's well you're talking about like you're playing a disney game the record ralph game like me but i mean you see a lot of stuff from smaller developers pretty much along the same lines well, I mean, it, like the uh, the company that did uh, game dev story and mm-hmm. uh, what the game I, I consider RP, kind of a smaller RPG one. Village or game whatever. Loft is in in, uh, in on both of uh, them. But I mean, Kero Soft, you're talking about. I yeah, love them. Uh, they do. If they release something, it's released on both platforms at the same time, and they're not a huge company. See, I really look at this. <laughs> I, I look at something like an Ouya, like a Game Stick, like like kind of how we as podcasters get excited with something like the Roku box, because now this that we're making here is now side by side with NBC's content on the freaking Hulu Plus. You know, now we're direct competitors, and we've been kind of risen up to that level, and that ax- point of access is there. I see this as kind of a, a hey, I got something that can sit right beside my Xbox, and I can, you know, play my uh, 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 GTA, you know, Vice City uh, uh, that came out on Android, but I can also play this really cool indie stuff. You know, like we get excited from stuff like Fez or uh, or, or Braid or, or uh, uh, Limbo. I've been playing, you know, on the Xbox. Like I think this is just another chapter to that, where it's like another chance at a Roku box type of situation. And I think it's really great and, and give us some some opportunities for really cool developers to come up uh, uh, that are already doing great stuff on the phone, and uh, you know, just to get in our living rooms. Here, here's my problem with it. All right. Uh, and I'm going to use an analogy that you both will understand very well. Uh, Ouya and this game stick crap is uh, the gaming equivalent of indie wrestling. <laughs> okay. You have you have the main show, mm-hmm. and uh, the, uh, Nintendo Xbox, Sony is WWE, and uh, these guys, these uh, Ouyas and game sticks are your uh, your local indie fed. Yeah. Kind of guys. Right. So, right. I mean, they, you'll get... <laughs> Riz is on that. Riz is on that. Uh, you'll get okay numbers mm-hmm. with the little guy, mm-hmm. but people are going to go there once or twice, realize that it's not what they're looking for over here. Yeah, and... but if you got... But but it's, it's okay, because if you got the market... If you don't have to worry about the marketing and selling the... Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 Ray Mysterio mask and all that stuff and making movies that fail and and XFL and everything like that. And all you have to worry about is your little market. That's enough for you. So that's great for that little developer. So all right, let's move on uh, to a couple more stories here. We've been on this one long enough. Uh, this is one that surprised me. That this wait. is what? Wait, 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 wait. Well, well, you well, just well. complained that we were on a story for a really long time. Um, let's move on. This one, uh, I was surprised. This one, I was surprised. This one uh, uh, was still popping up. Hey, remember DDR? Remember when we had the pads and we were doing that yeah. thing? You know, I mean, we were like pretty big on that. Like I got like the nice pads and everything like that. I had to replace them like three times because we just beat the hell out of them with our feet. Um, well, apparently, 
there there was a story from from CES that Dance Dance Revolution comes to the classroom. I thought it already did. Yeah, this is a non-story. <laughs> but it, it's not a non-story. It's it is a, a non-story. I'm, I'm it super- happened like five years ago. Well, well apparently, just now, uh, it's the uh, one they writ- whoever wrote this thinks that it's a brand new story. It's not. Uh, but apparently, Dance Dance Revolution Classroom Edition uh, is is uh, is being released. So previously, yes, DDR has been making it in the classrooms and, and phys ed programs, but there's there's never been like an edition for education, I guess. Probably something that they, that's a little more, you know, set in tune with, with what the, the physical educators would want to do. So DDR is still a thing, and they're still rolling it out to schools. Um, so far, the game I think, has been... I think you're half right. I think they're still rolling it out to schools. The first part, I would argue with. Well, wait, what first part? That it's still a thing. It's the, <laughs> hey, that DDR machine is still there at the um, at, at the uh, 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 old rundown movie theater nearby. So <laughs> you know, it's still out there, right? It just really hasn't done anything. Wait, hold on. To get excited, Which rundown so. movie theater? Uh, the the Stena out there at Bridgeville. Oh, yeah. Because but but that's everything's still there from ten years ago. So. So I, I thought yeah, you were talking to like something like redone, like the Hollywood or something. I was gonna no, crawl no, no. over the desk. Oh, I'll be awesome you. if they head down to Hollywood. That'd be great. I <laughs> yeah, I was, get down there. I was gonna crawl over the desk and smack you. <laughs> um, with this, they're saying that the game is being launched in uh, three schools in uh, uh, Longwood, Florida, Gainesville, Georgia, and Fresno, Texas. Uh, but again, this is just this version of the game, and I wonder, you know, they're showing like the full arcade thing, but I'm wondering if it's just. You know, with the PlayStation, so it looks like it's just a customized version. Way to go, Konami, for waiting this long to get on board this train because these things were already being bought and used in schools for years as, as a as a uh, physical education tool across the country. So I, I was just kind of like, I was really surprised that it's great that they're doing stuff like this, but it feels like they could just instead of getting all these pads for like twenty kids in a class, they can just get a connect or something. I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. Anyways, I don't know. Wait, so what do you... Same same way they get uh, uh, like Connect and Wii's are huge in retirement communities. Old people <laughs> love that shit. Really, Connects are making the rounds now. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm not surprised. Not surprised, man. See, it's uh, better. It's better than the Wii. The the Wii because you don't have to hold the the controller. Yeah, they just move, and yeah. it's just even more even simpler. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm still amazed. I like like one of the few things I can get my dad into playing video games. I finally like goaded him into playing uh, Wii bowling with us, you know. Um, and he was very, very standoff about video games. Like I haven't only seen him pick up a controller once before playing like Super Mario Brothers. Um, but anyways, parents uh, dig Super Mario Brothers. They, yeah, they they do. Not yeah, mine, not mine. Um, so this, hey, uh, here's another phone thing. So one, I know the Pebble Watch was a big thing. The E Ink Watch. Has you guys heard about this? I guess it'll Bluetooth with your phone, and you'll get like your messages and tweets on your on your watch. It's E Ink, so it doesn't take much energy, and you can see it in, in in you know sunlight and everything. But apparently there was this is kind of a cool kind of iteration here, where um, they're putting uh, E Ink on a smartphone. Oh, sorry. There it is. Um, so it has two screens. It has your regular screen, but when whenever you know, like the phone's locked, it's called the Yoda phone. Y O T A, not Yoda. Um, <laughs> it seems to work that like when it's lit up, your screen looks like it usually looks like an Android phone, right? But when your screen's off, it'll still show up the time and everything in e ink, which takes less power. And again, you can just kind of see in sunlight. That's actually pretty cool. It's a cool application to it. it it's kind of like, you know, uh, a low power mode. Uh, and if you got noti- I, I really think if it, this is something where you got notifications like, you know, like I, I've said that my thing, my thing bumps up every time I get like a notification or, or a tweet or a, or a, not all tweets, but a, a, a text or something like that. So if it's sitting there all through the night, it's lighting up for like five seconds every time something comes in, right? That's sucking the battery down. If it's just doing e-ink, that's like, you know, a fraction of power, and you still get your notification. It doesn't light up a room, you know. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think it's kind of a cool uh, thing that, that that hopefully we see on more phones here. 
Yeah, I was hoping that uh, I really like the the e ink technology. I used to have a um, Kindle with a keyboard, and it was amazing. And uh, the e ink was so smooth and so crisp, and I loved it. But I knew, like, oh, this is in black and white, so its its shelf life is limited. And I um, I like that they are still using that at, using that technology somewhere because it's great. It's like it's getting um, it's like it's kind of reinvigorating between the between stuff like this and 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 the uh, whole smartwatch. Uh, situation mm-hmm. so which speaking of it, you said it was a, it was a watch and you've got the smart watch business and mm-hmm. and you know the, it reminded me of um those uh, activity trackers like the nike fit bands and all that shit yeah yeah it's still kind of a big thing is anybody actually using those like who is this product for i feel like they're putting a lot of time and energy into a, a product that no one's actually buying I, well I, do you really know anybody that's a big fitness stunt yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I know lots of people who are runners, but like I'm not going to spend as much as I would on a smartphone to have a band with seven LEDs on it that I wear around my wrist and then gives me information about how many times I moved that day. See, are you I, talking about Nike Plus? I, I wasn't playing. Not wasn't, Plus. Like they, they have the fuel the, bands. The activity and bands. The activity oh, bands okay. that track like how many steps you've taken and everything. But but then it connects with your phone and everything. And, and, I have and I, I know a handful of people that have you, them. You do? Like, well, yeah. I think Europe. Like Europe. the $150 ones? Yeah. Well, but you're you're talking about people at your firm, right? No. No? No, I, I'm oh. pretty sure we, have, I, we all know people on Twitter that own this. Okay. I was I was just I was reading about them the other day because I thought you know oh well that'd be a really cool thing to have and I did a little research into it and then I thought well I could just buy a new phone yeah <laughs> yeah I'm pretty sure that we know uh, the three of us you know have to, you a have handful be, of people that, on Twitter that have these and these these have to be people that are really into fitness right the, because they're the people that that wants to be you know all those stats uh, and 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 uh, if I say married couple do you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, I know exactly who you're talking about. Okay, yeah. Well, I believe they both have one. Okay, okay. Interesting. Um, uh, Loke, I think, has one. Makes sense. I could be wrong on that. But, but I, Loke yeah. is a tech nut. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's all the Apple devices <laughs> in his apartment. So, I mean, I, I like I said, there's at least a handful of people that we all three know that yeah, yeah. have this. It, it's definitely, like, like I... I, I uh, I haven't heard anybody else talking about it that we know for the most part, but it's one of those things like I knew all the tech journalists was like, oh, I'm going to try this out, you know, and then most of them complain about it as they do. Well, that's um, because they're smart. Uh, the people that we know that do have them mm-hmm. only left the uh, the auto tweets on uh, for the first couple of days that they had them and then they shut them off. So, yeah, yeah, it, it seems kind of fatty to me. Um, this whole thing, but like a lot of fitness is really a oh, fatty, so. no fad, fad. I heard, I thought you said yeah. fatty. Yeah. Um, so one last, one last thing, apparently, uh, some, some in, in, ingenuitous, oh, I don't know the word. Uh, yeah, engine. Oh, something like that. Uh, oh, some yeah, forward-looking right. people in Texas. I, I guess this is a judge that did this. Uh, they're going to roll out America's first bookless public library, which will look, ac- according to uh, how it's set up here, uh, a lot like an Apple store. Uh, so this is in Baxter County, Texas. Uh, they say that they're going to open the first 100% digital uh, public library system in the country, according to The Verge. Uh, unveiling plans for its first location this past week. The plan has been in works for a while, uh, headed up by the uh, Baxter, Bexar, Bexar? Where's Russell fan at? I'm sure this is near him. Uh, County Judge uh, Nelson Wolf, who says that he was inspired uh, to create a digitally native library while reading Walter Isaacson's biography of Steve Jobs. So, um, that's kind of cool. Yeah, uh, all digital library. I mean, we're kind of leaning towards it. Like we're seeing. Like I know, I, I I'm always amazed every time I go into the Carnegie Library how much they're adapting to digital. But they still have books upon books. You ever go into the main branch? Oh my God, they got everything in there. Mm-hmm. Um, they they're embracing digital. I mean, I, I get a lot of books. I, I get I'm catching up on like every graphic novel I've ever wanted to read because basically I can go and log in their site and say, okay, I want this book. Okay, there's like seven copies across all the libraries in Allegheny County, and uh, uh, please ship it as soon as it's available to my lab- library five blocks away. 
that's pretty awesome. Uh, they are doing stuff with like the, the Kindle lending programs. Um, I just wonder with something like this, the biggest thing with something like this is getting the rights for enough books, right? Mm -hmm. Getting that whole idea. And there's still going to be, you know, if you're lending books out, like, like the Carnegie Library for this entire system, it seems, only gets one copy to lend out of a certain book digitally to Kindles. It's hmm. digital, you know, but I guess it costs money. It still costs money. It's the rights. It's it's uh, trying to emulate the way it works with physical books. So you don't have just it's just spreads out and there's no reason to buy books. Um, so, uh, hey, hey, this is fun. They're going to call it bibliotech. So. Huh. Um, Why are they calling it bibliotech? Bibliotech. Bibliotech. Why? But, you know, it's a. It's a look. It's a play on words, Chachi. Just go with it. Don't worry about it. No, um, I was seeing if you understood why they were calling it Bibliotech. Uh, they estimate the beginning costs are going to be around $250,000 to secure the first 10,000 titles for the library. So, uh, so yeah, pretty cool. So, uh, what, what do you think, LB? Uh, uh, you know, we wish we see one of these around here. Um, eh, I don't think we really need one around here. No. Um, we've got our own... We don't need an actual building to uh, lend wirelessly because our uh, our library system has that. Yeah, yeah. Um, like you mentioned, I think I think it's great. I love that uh, libraries are doing that because uh, for Christmas this year we bought my grandmother a Kindle, <laughs> and, and, and it would it would encourage like the, kind of that that kind of practice too. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of go through like three books a week. Yeah, yeah. Oh wait, when you take away that, I have to carry it around and everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, have to go to the actual library. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's uh, I, I kind of my first thought was, is this a very tech conscious area? You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. uh, I, I wonder if it would fly in a place that maybe wasn't. Like I don't think you can drop this in like you know some of the you know worst neighborhoods in Pittsburgh, and this would work. You know what I mean? Um, if you drop this in like a shady side, I think it would work. You know, um, but it, it just just for the the, the tech curve, um, especially considering how many people come to the library to learn how to use a computer in the first mm -hmm. place. But I guess this would also be a reason to get into that. You know, so uh, what do you think, Chaji? No thoughts. Okay. Um, well, with that, uh, LB, you got anything else you want to throw out there before we head out of here? Uh, not really. Uh, pretty much all of my um, my tech focus has been. Um, looking at computer parts and now using money to buy computer parts and then assemble mm. them. So nothing else has really caught my eye, you know, playing some games here and there, but that's pretty much it. Awesome. Uh, you're over at thoughtfulriot.com at DJ Lunchbox on the Twitters. Would you're you... all accurate. You can also find me at uh, thoughtfulriot.tumblr.com where I post a bunch of random shit that I find on Tumblr. I keep forgetting you have a Tumblr. Right? It's a, so that's when it's just random? You, you just use it's that just, for... It's all just reblogs that just I a, find looking at other people. It's just kind of a mind dump for you. Yes. Okay. Yeah, mainly of stuff that I like, like Doctor Who, a lot of Doctor Who, Sherlock, television movies, stuff I watch. Excellent, excellent. I, I just kind of spread my mind dumps all over the place. I spend some... I dump a little on Pinterest. I dump a little over <laughs> here. I dump a little on Twitter. It just... I don't know. I'm just kind of touching base with everything um <laughs> excellent chachi of course chachiplays.com is going on right now and uh unsung anything else you want to throw out there at chachi says on twitter no that's it all right and of course go over i'm over at mikesorg.com check out all the shows and everything at sorgatronmedia.com uh where uh we're getting the shows going check out uh, we launched everything back up last week uh, and check out everything going on there. And uh, new new stuff on the stores. We're rolling out some new DVDs and soon, some new options. If you're into wrestling and everything, go check those out as well. And, and we're just working, working our asses off this year. Uh, a lot of cool stuff coming up. Uh, so with that, thanks, guys. It's the Awesome Cast. We're at AwesomeCast.com. Drop, drop us a line to contact at AwesomeCast.com. Tweet us at AwesomeCast. Uh, drop us a line uh, uh, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Google+, and we're here live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern at live.sorgatronmedia.com. We'll see you guys next week. Uh, thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. <laughs>